Welcome to Catholic Culture Audiobooks, a production of catholicculture.org and under the patronage of St. John Henry Newman. Today's reading, Two Poems in Honor of St. Cecilia's Day, by John Dryden, recited by James T. Majewski. A Psalm for St. Cecilia's Day, 1687 From harmony, from heavenly harmony, this universal frame began. When nature underneath a heap of jarring atoms lay and could not heave her head, the tuneful voice was heard from high, Arise ye more than dead. Then cold and hot, and moist and dry, in order to their stations leap, and music's power obey. From harmony, from heavenly harmony, this universal frame began. From harmony to harmony, through all the compass of the notes it ran, the diapason closing full in man. What passion cannot music raise and quell? When Jubal struck the corded shell, his listening brethren stood around, and wondering on their faces fell, to worship that celestial sound. Less than a god they thought there could not dwell within the hollow of that shell that spoke so sweetly and so well. What passion cannot music raise and quell? The trumpet's loud clangor excites us to arms, with shrill notes of anger and mortal alarms. The double, double, double beat of the thundering drum Cries, hark, the foes come! Charge, charge, tis too late to retreat! The soft, complaining flute in dying notes discovers The woes of hopeless lovers Whose dirge is whispered by the warbling lute. Sharp violins proclaim their jealous pangs and desperation, fury, frantic indignation, depth of pains and height of passion for the fair, disdainful dame. But oh, what art can teach, what human voice can reach the sacred organ's praise? Notes inspiring holy love, notes that wing their heavenly ways to mend the choirs above. Orpheus could lead the savage race, and trees unrooted left their place, sequacious of the lyre. But bright Cecilia raised the wonder higher. When to her organ vocal breath was given, an angel heard, and straight appeared, mistaking earth for heaven. As from the power of sacred lays the spheres began to move, and sung the great Creator's praise to all the blessed above, so when the last and dreadful hour this crumbling pageant shall devour, the trumpet shall be heard on high, the dead shall live, the living die, and music shall untune the sky. Alexander's Feast, or The Power of Music, a song in honor of St. Cecilia's Day, 1697. T'was at the royal feast for Persia won by Philip's warlike son. Aloft in awful state, the godlike hero sate on his imperial throne. His valiant peers were placed around, their brows with roses and with myrtles bound, so should desert in arms be crowned. The lovely Thais by his side, saint like a blooming eastern bride, in flower of youth and beauty's pride, happy, happy, happy pair. None but the brave, none but the brave, none but the brave deserves the fair. Timotheus, placed on high amid the tuneful choir, with flying fingers touched the lyre. The trembling notes ascend the sky and heavenly joys inspire. The song began from Jove, 
who left his blissful seats above. Such is the power of mighty love. A dragon's fiery form belied the god. Sublime on radiant spires he roared when he to fair Olympia pressed, and while he sought her snowy breast, then round her slender waist he curled and stamped an image of himself, a sovereign of the world. The listening crowd admired the lofty sound. A present deity, they shout around. A present deity, the vaulted roofs rebound. With ravished ears, the monarch hears, assumes the god, affects to nod, and seems to shake the spheres. The praise of Bacchus, then, the sweet musician sung, of Bacchus, ever fair and ever young. The jolly god in triumph comes, sound the trumpets, beat the drums. Flushed with a purple grace, he shows his honest face. Now give the oh boy's breath, he comes, he comes. Bacchus, ever fair and young, drinking joys did first ordain. Bacchus's blessings are a treasure, drinking is the soldier's pleasure. Rich the treasure, sweet the pleasure, sweet is pleasure after pain. Soothed with the sound, the king grew vain, fought all his battles o'er again, and thrice he routed all his foes, and thrice he slew the slain. The master saw the madness rise, his glowing cheeks, his ardent eyes, and while he heaven and earth defied, changed his hand and checked his pride. He chose a mournful muse soft pity to infuse. He sung Darius, great and good, by too severe a fate, fallen, 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 fallen from his high estate and weltering in his blood. Deserted at his utmost need by those his former bounty fed, on the bare earth exposed he lies, with not a friend to close his eyes. With downcast looks the joyless victor sate, revolving in his altered soul the various turns of chance below, and now and then a sigh he stole, and tears began to flow. The mighty master smiled to see that love was in the next degree. T'was but a kindred sound to move, for pity melts the mind to love. Softly sweet, in Lydian measures, soon he soothed his soul to pleasures. War, he sung, is toil and trouble, honor but an empty bubble, never-ending, still beginning, fighting still and still destroying. If the world be worth thy winning, think, oh, think it worth enjoying. Lovely Tai sits beside thee, take the good the gods provide thee. The many rend the skies with loud applause, so love was crowned, but music won the cause. The prince, Unable to conceal his pain, gazed on the fair who caused his care, and sighed and looked, sighed and looked, sighed and looked, and sighed again. At length, with love and wine at once oppressed, the vanquished victor sunk upon her breast. Now! Strike the golden lyre again, a louder yet, and yet a louder strain. Break his bands of sleep asunder, and rouse him like a rattling peal of thunder. Hark, hark, the horrid sound has raised up his head, as awaked from the dead, and amazed he stares around. Revenge, revenge, Timotheus cries. See the furies arise, see the snakes that they rear, how they hiss in their hair, and the sparkles that flash from their eyes. Behold, a ghastly band, each a torch in his hand. Those are Grecian ghosts that in battle were slain, and unburied remain inglorious on the plain. 
give the vengeance due to the valiant crew. Behold how they toss their torches on high, how they point to the Persian abods and glittering temples of their hostile gods. The princes applaud with a furious joy, and the king sees the flambeau with zeal to destroy. Thais led the way to light him to his prey, and like another Helen fired another Troy. Thus, long ago, ere heaving bellows learned to blow, while organs yet were mute, Timotheus, to his breathing flute and sounding lyre, could swell the soul to rage or kindle soft desire. At last, divine Cecilia came, inventress of the vocal frame, the sweet enthusiast from her sacred store enlarged the former narrow bounds and added length to solemn sounds with nature's mother wit and arts unknown before. Let old Timotheus yield the prize or both divide the crown. He raised a mortal to the skies. She drew an angel down. This has been Two Poems in Honor of St. Cecilia's Day by John Dryden, recited by James T. Majewski. Production copyright 2022 by Trinity Communications. This podcast is brought to you by catholicculture.org and made possible by listener support. To donate, please visit catholicculture.org slash donate slash audio. That's catholicculture.org slash donate slash audio.